Hi everybody out there, this is Mark Cabasa with uh, Mine Rat Minerals and today we're going to kind of give you a little bit of an instructional tutorial here on how to cleave some octahedrons from fluorite. We've had quite a few people asking us how they make these and usually it's the miners in some type of fluorospar district throughout the world with uh, their mining calcium fluoride so that they use it for either the steel industry as flux or make acid out of it. And normally what we're looking for as mineral dealers, we're looking for some of these beautiful crystals like this. This one happens to be from Cave and Rock, Illinois, from the old Denton mine. And this is normally what we like to play with. But when the specimen's damaged underground, missing corners or broken in half, then the miners would typically take the broken pieces be something like this and you can see here there's a cleavage plane what I just had here is a cube and fluorite is part of the isometric cubic habit and its cleavage plane is octahedral so it wants to try to make an octahedron and what the miners do is they find these cleavage planes and then they start to work with the material and they'll chip an octahedron. So they'll start out with something like this. Here's a broken piece and this one's already shaping up. You can see here that there's quite a few of the planes already showing. So this is a fairly easy one out there. Good luster, Cave and Rock was always good for that. So we're looking for eight faces to make an octahedron. So normally what the miner will do is, he'll take his piece, after cutting himself many times in the beginning, drawing blood, trying to figure this stuff out, because they're very sharp, razor sharp. But what he likes to do is, he likes to take his chipping chisel, which is just a standard chisel, and they usually round it a little bit so it's not so straight edged. One of the techniques to better cleaving for octahedrons is, one impact at one point so it's a clean follow-through that way you don't get all the little uh, pecker tracks on the edge of the fluorite so what you're going to try to do is what I like to do is kind of find my cleave and kind of bring it down there because I want to bring the points together so I've got a nice face here that I just created so I'm going to come over here and try to okay see so we've got some ingrown crystal here so that's going to give me a little trouble so I'm going to go back over here and try to clean it up a little bit. Kind of get our flow down. See if we can come back here and clean that up a little bit. That's a little bit of a mess there on the back side. So we'll come back here. Oops, that's a little tough. There we go. try to bring these around so we've got a nice clean diamond. This one has quite a bit of fracturing on the inside as you can see here. It was already fractured so it's trying to cleave itself actually. The trick on this one is going to be cleaning it up so it actually looks like you know what you would see as an octahedron, something that's desirable to sell a show or become part of a pound here, pound there sold. It's got all kinds of little things sticking out here that want to grab you. So that's getting a little closer here. You can see we've got a lot of internal growths that are going to make it a little tough to make a perfect octahedron unless you want to end up with something very small if you're looking for perfect. We still have some odd cleaves here. Normally you try to clean that up. you get your desired effect here but it gets smaller so if you're selling this stuff by the pound normally as a miner you try to stop as large as you could that way you get your maximum revenue when the guys that are buying stop in and weigh this stuff up and I'm making a complete mess out of that side there we go we're kind of bringing it back around let's clean it up here a little bit nope usually if it doesn't chip then you got to kind of move around a little bit Watch those fingers.
getting smaller. Trying to make it perfect, but making it smaller. So that's kind of a cave-in rock fluorite there. We went from big to small. My fault. But then we've got some of the uh, we've got some rough here from Reembos Mock, South Africa, up in the Northern Cape along the Orange River. This is some material I got a few years back when I was down there visiting the locality. Now this, my chisel is a little too small. You'd want to use a little bit heavier chisel, so I'm going to use kind of a small hammer here that I've ground the end to kind of do the same thing as a chisel, so that way we can move a little faster here. And it really makes things a little easier. And you can see the reemboss mock really likes to cleave. It's some of the cleanest material I've come across in the chipping world outside of cave and rock. So you would normally just kind of shape it up, get it down, and then do your finish work with a smaller chisel so that way you can kind of bring it together here. You know, get your own technique down however you like, but it's really nice if you can get it down to where it's just one hit and go. Like there I've messed it up. I'm getting boogered up edges. I need a little bit larger chisel. But it's pretty close. You know, you got some decent color there. You can wash them up. And there you've got a green octahedron from South Africa. So there you have it today, folks. There's cleaving octahedrons from Fluorite 101. This is Mark Abasso with Minerat Minerals. We'll talk to you next time.